Some of them aren't great, but you know what I mean is if you need, if you need a resource or you're having trouble going to sleep at night, go to this website, all right? So here's farmscaping. Um, go, to, go to beneficial, okay? So here's how I teach this stuff. I start with ladybugs because I want everybody to know ladybugs. If you scroll down in this, is there a way to scroll down? Yeah, okay, keep going. That just shows how a lady, okay, here, keep, yeah, that's good right there. All right, so here's the first ladybug that we always find in our broccoli patches, and so I list it first, which is C7. It's always out there crawling on the dirt clods, and it's headed for these little green plants, so I really like it. If you guys look here, here's C7 eggs with my dirty fingernail. Here's a, a larva turning into a pupa, so you see what the larvae are. And here's a C7 pupa, which a lot of people squash, right? Because they think it's, you know, when I go to, to uh, uh, some of these seminars or Southern SOG or CFSA, people always say, oh, I've been squashing those. I thought they, you know, and I'm like, no, no, no. Come down here a little further. The other thing that you can do, you guys, you, I, we don't need to do this now, but you can click on these photos and they enlarge. So one of the big things that we always like with C7 is yarrow because it has a lot of, oh, cool. Yeah, so there's a pretty good picture of a C7. So the, there's four main species of ladybugs. It's getting late. How much time have we got? 20, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. I don't, need, I don't need to go through all these, but if you, I mean, what I want to tell you guys is here's a resource. It's a little homespun and blocky. I need to get in and update it a little bit. But everything we saw out there today is on this, and it has all the little quirks that Pat and I uh, come back out again. Or go to pests real quick. Just go to pests. And more and more of these are going to also be new pictures are going to be showing up on our website. So yeah, pictures. and I need to get. You need to link to our site too. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do that. Here's a picture of Pat's. This is his machata squash where he, they had like, uh, or butternut squash where you had. How many tons of that did you have? It was, it was Tahitian wintermelon and butternut. We got. More than a ton. And we go to Highland Lake and they'd stored them in all of the, uh, the, the uh, stairs going down where they had the double doors, you know, because every house had an old, uh, old side thing. So they filled, yeah, they filled those side cellars just full. You'd open it up and I'm like, you can't get down here. There's squashes everywhere. Go down a little further. See if you can. <laughs> okay, so uh, click on this. That's all right. You'll see a lot. You'll see. Okay, well here. Yeah, click on that, and then we'll go down one, and then uh, I'll kind of just let uh, everybody kind of. Okay, here's the example, and this is Jake's farm from about six years ago. Here is his Mizuna. This was actually Johnny's salad mix. Was what it was. You know what I mean? He had the whole thing, and so here it is unmarketable, all right? We irrigate nematodes in. I should have spread these apart a little bit more, but you can, this is marketable. So, you know, what started happening right away, we got rid of onion maggot, we got rid of flea beetles, we got rid of Mexican bean beetles, and we controlled all of his crucifer pests in one seat. Mexican bean beetles? Yeah, because he had, he had beans, like we used um, pediobias. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, he had, an, he, had an eight, he had two acres of beans. And he called me up, he was ecstatic, because he said, I have no, and the other thing that you'll see, if you come, yeah, come back in here, go down a little further. All right, um, click on that. So here's what we, oh, that's okay. Doink. Yeah. Okay, there's three things here. Here's that imported cabbage worm that we saw out there that had been killed by BT, right? So there it is. So when I'm scouting, then I know that, all right? And that becomes one of the things I'm scouting for. Here's a brassica aphid that's landed here, and there's a brassica flea beetle, not the two-line beetle. There's one that's yellow and has two lines. That's another brassica. These do not go to potatoes, and they don't go to uh, solanaceous plants. They're specific to crucifers. So if you know that, you can, you can trick these things, okay? Um, let's go back to beneficials. And I want to show them some shots of Pediobius. Go all the way down to the bottom. Let's see. And because we're 
good to show them the um, rolling ride, too. Okay, what, um, I'll tell you what. Go to pests again. I'm sorry. We'll do this. And go, let's see what comes up. Should come up. Go roll all the way down to the bottom. Because this is all the way down. Okay, here you go. All right, so that's okay. So here's Mexican bean beetle, or and also remember squash beetle. These two are very similar. So yeah. what controls Mexican bean beetle will control squash beetle because they're both epilactic. And we have these out right. of the garden today. So here's, uh, you know, this is a magnified photo. Yeah, you saw those. And you see these. Now, the trick to tell them from ladybug uh, eggs there's usually way more eggs, okay, and they're spaced out a little bit more. Well, and the other thing is, is if they're on beans, it's kind of like, well, duh. You know, pretty much they're, they're, uh, they're Mexican bean beans. Even though it's duh, Look at this because thing. it might be lady beetle eggs, and I know I can control them with PDOBIS, I don't squish anything that looks like ladybug eggs. Yeah. I have to be certain, you know, that it's, it's the bean beetle. Yeah, go over to the right a little. Yeah, that, you're going to have to go to the right. And I don't know if you saw on our website, ah, everybody sweet. in this class made a picture of these guys and bracketing on the same on the same leaf there were eggs and a lady a ladybug larva eating the eggs. So both of both of these are pup, uh, both of these are parasitized. This one is just now starting to show it where it's puffed up. So if I looked at that, I would know as a scout, I know that that's parasitized. Kind of like how I look at imported, I can just tell. Parasitized by the wasp. By the wasp, by PDOVS, right. And so what happens then when they, what happens is this one in about two or three days is going to look like this one. And then what happens is about 10 or a dozen exit holes come out of the top, boom, and these wasps come out. Okay. So if you have umbellifera, if you have really fine nectar, floral nectaries, these things will just reproduce like crazy. What happens is first they hit the big larvae. Then they hit the medium larvae, and then pretty soon they're hitting the little tiny larvae, and then you have no larvae. And they actually take a few pupa out, too. Okay. The very beginning, the beginning of the pupation. Right, when they get in there, they can hit them. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, here is the website that's got some photos in there. We'll link to Mill River. We'll improve all this and make it better and more user friendly. There's little quick, uh, you know, quirks about all this stuff. There's Pediobius fovulatus. Yeah, so you, anyway. Uh, we have most of the main pests on here. We're going to need to put some of the newer ones in, like kudzu bug and uh, some of the other ones. So here, for example, harlequin bug. One of the things to um, go here and click on this. Oops, that's all right. Okay, this. You notice what I got there is the 1952 USDA yearbook. The other thing I tell you guys is go to yard sales and flea markets and look for these old golden guides and these old Simon and Schuster things. Let's see if this one will load up. Okay, well there's something wrong with it. Um, well, let's see. Then go to this one. So here we are looking at harlequin bugs. Let's see if this. Okay, see how you can tell that the, that that plant has been stunted by harlequin bugs so if i'm scouting man i can tell you right now that plant needs to be nuked <laughs> by soap you know what i mean that's the only control that i know to get rid of harlequin bugs now it does have egg parasitoids harlequin bug has three different kinds of egg parasitoids but i'm going to kill everything you guys can see the fetish that i have for harlequin bugs is i am not going to let those guys get past me so, yeah, you no. To, you have to hit those guys hard yeah. and fast right. and early and right. keep hitting them. And then eventually, they'll just like come to a plateau. Right. And you need to relax because a little down the road, they'll start to build again. Right. You can breathe a few times during the summer. But when you see them starting, you can't let them get past that gregarious stage. No, uh-uh. Together before they spread out. Because if they spread out, you'll run out of time. And the other thing I'll tell you is you can use your farmscaping to prevent them. Because if they get into farmscaping and you nuke them in there, then they don't go in. Well, the first time I did it, I let them get in there thinking that they would stay in there, and good grief, they multiplied, and we and had a horrendous. That's what started me. You know, I never stopped squishing. Sessions of Cleome, so you can wipe out the, the ones where they're heavy. Right. Um, yep. Oh yes, right. That's a good trap crop. Cleome, spiderwort is a really good trap crop. What we would do in, at the Highland Lake is Pat had these tubs of of soap right at the base of the Cleome plant. 
All you do is have to come up, hit it a few times, all the harlequin bugs would fall down in the soap, move on to the next plant. And they attract it, yes. Do you have, on this website, like under pests, do you have trap crops listed? Is that um, I'm working on, yeah, I have some trap crops for some stuff. That's one of the next things. In fact, if you go to, let me think about this. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, well, okay, that's, and also red yes. And organic, uh, control, like what percentage is, like you were talking about right, like yeah, and yes, soap, right, right. Um, you know, well, and, and part of that though too, you guys, is remember this, if there's a plant that you're growing and there's a closely related species to it, grow that as a trap. I mean, that's what I, we ended up doing. General. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what And what happened with me too is I started hanging out with these California folks and the California folks were the ones telling me about these trap crops. You know what I mean? I'm like, thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Right. Bug. Or um, cucumber, it's the buffalo corn. Yes, which right. Which the highest amount of bitter. So you want, you know, the whole family would be the buffalo corn. Right? Pardon? For the whole cucumber taste. Yes, it would work. That's going to be the trap crop. Yeah. And you know what's funny is in our valley, you know, the edges of the roads have that old buffalo squash, and I'll bet the Indians grew that stuff. Mm -hmm. I bet a lot of that is just remnant, because some of the areas where we were were really heavily cultivated. I mean, there's kivas and all this stuff that you can see where Cove Creek and Watauga River come together just down from my house. So, I hope that we've been able to poke a few holes in the blinders that you guys might have on farmscaping. The thing to do is don't be afraid, poke the box, try some stuff, don't be afraid to fail. Uh, you know, for every, for every insight that I have found, I've tried a hundred things that didn't work, but I just kept going. I, you know, like Pat says, swim upstream. That's the way to go. Or my dad would say, if the road isn't uphill, you're on, not on the right road. Right? So I'll close if there's any other statements that you guys or anything. I, I'll tell you what, I will do that trap crop thing. That's a really good one because um, that would be really easy to do. And that's one of the reasons why we would use that BB-50 is because it had leaf mustard in it and it had radishes. And, and the thing that bugs, plant feeding bugs, the thing that, Gesundheit, the thing that plant feeding bugs like the most are green seed pods. So I use red bud as a trap crop for stink bugs. Because red buds get these big pods on them and I can spray them and nuke all of my stink bugs. Anything that has a green pod. Cleon has a big green pod full of seeds. Radishes, big green pod full of seeds. If you have big green pods full of seeds out there, I guarantee you your plant feeding stink bugs, as phytophagous stink bugs is what you'd call them, will go there. Meanwhile, while your radishes in flower, it's a spectacular beneficial insect next year. Yes, right. So you get double, and then actually, you can also have some of those radishes that you grow for pods and use pods in your CSA or for, for markets because there's a particular one that's specific to that, the rat tail, which is probably the worst name I've ever heard for a vegetable. <laughs> rat tail radish is grown for the pods. So you've gone past the stage of having fed your beneficials. You know, some of those are going to be covered up with pests, but there's still going to be plenty of good ones that you can actually sell. And that's the other thing we have to get to is the, to cover the multiplicity of ways that each farmscaping plant fits into what you're doing. Right. Very, it's very rare, I mean, cup plant, even cup plant, you got cut flower and you have beneficial insect flower, plus you have the water. Um, so it's very rare that a farm camping, camping plant functions as one thing. You know, they all tend to have many, many functions. Well, in our system, we try to deliberately pick stuff that has multiple functions, if we can. Not always, but you, know, you think a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that we're using once I get back to fennel again, it may, it's a great pickling spice. Right? So I've got my garlic in my, my garden. I've got cucumbers. I've got several different kinds of pickling spices that I just go out and pick. I, have, I use grape leaves in my pickles. But I got everything I got except the pickling spice that, I, you know, the, that you have to buy, I got out of my garden and it was farmscaping. And the seeds from Fennel are great um, for any fine of Indian restaurants. Yeah, they're breath freshener. Great for gas, too. They're yes, great, they're that's really right. Uh, many uses. And that's just one plant. Examples are over and over again. You'll see all the different ways that each plant 
fits into what you're doing. And the best thing that we can do, and the reason that you see that there's two of us talking here, is this is all about teamwork. It takes, it takes people to figure stuff out, you know, but we have, we, once we share it, you know, I go to meetings like this and I learn from you guys all the time. I've learned several things here today. So that is where we just have to meet regularly. I've gotten really sidetracked into this hemlock stuff, but it was to prove a point. And the point is, I don't care what system, if you use these farmscaping principles right, you can control pests in almost any system.